Hello, I'm Lyndon Bornan with Brandon Friendship Centre Education. Welcome to What We Believe, a series where we explore religious beliefs in our community. Today I have with me my colleague Frank Tachon, who is our cultural worker and an elder with Brandon Friendship Centre. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, and we're going to go through some questions that we've kept standard for, for mm -hmm. each person that we're interviewing about religious beliefs. So okay. I'll get going right away and uh, welcome to what we believe and could you please tell us something about your life so far, Frank? For myself, well, I moved here about seven years ago and uh, I like the city. Uh -huh. I was born in, uh, here in Brandon. I was raised in Sioux Valley and uh, I was shipped off to a residence school when I was about six, five years old, you know. Then I uh, came back and Life began from there, I guess. Where, where did you go to residential school? Pine right? Creek. Pine Creek. Oh, yes. Okay, I know what, where, where that yes. is. Okay. Frank, I, I know that, you know, in terms of, uh, am I correct to say Dakota spirituality or Sioux spirituality? What, what, what? We prefer Dakota. Dakota? Yeah. Okay. So in terms of Dakota spirituality, we're not talking about a, a church or necessarily a mm -hmm. building as such, but, but where, how could people contact you or how do you, know, how do, how does your... Uh, your group, as it were, or your, your uh, organize themselves. For for myself, I guess we're open. Okay. There's no phone number. There's you know, just uh, if you need to, not not join, but to, to experience it, you just present tobacco. Okay. To the, to to myself, and right. we'll take it from there. Okay. <clears throat> um, how are you? You know, through your spiritual work, how are you involved in the community? Which communities? I, I guess I'm thinking here because our program mainly focuses on the Brandon area. In terms of okay. so, how yeah, how are you involved in, in your work in the community? But the uh, community, I guess I'm. Um, I've kind of out there. Uh, people know me. Yes. From previous, uh, uh, what do you call uh, open prayers or okay. functions where. I'm in, invited to, to do the open prayer or blessing of the food. Sure. And this is where I got into that community, doing my spirituality. Does it work well for you working for the Friendship Center? Is, is that a good contact? It's networking? awesome. Is that's, it? Yes, that's part of my job. And you know what? I get paid for it, so. Yeah. <laughs> like me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. We're pretty uh, lucky. <laughs> Frank, do you believe in God or a supreme being? Yes, I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, would I be right in thinking that you would refer to that, that being as creator? Creator or in our language, of Good. Thank you. Yeah. Have you always believed? Uh, not till, because when I went to residential school, we were forced into the Christianity. Yes. Okay. I was a Catholic. Okay. So I went to church every Sunday, okay. even when I got back from residential school. You carried on. Yeah, we carried, carried on, on till, I don't know. When I was about 28, because when I got back from residence school, I also drank yes. alcohol, you know, to just to ease the pain within within yes. my, myself, going through all this emotional abuse and whatever. Yep. So at that time, I was kind of curious about my culture, my religion. So I started asking, and you know, my dad wasn't really into it, and so was my mom but they, they spoke the Dakota language, which was I was very unfortunate and lucky to have. Yep. And I still do talk Dakota. Okay. So, you know, I'm lucky in that way. But the lo I lost that culture, that history of Dakota people. What is Dakota? Yeah. You know, who am I? So I start questioning myself. Then I start asking and going to ceremonies. You know, my first sweat lodge was quite an experience. You know, a lot of people say the sweat lodge is this and that. But you know what? They hear things out there, but you have to experience it yourself okay. in order to learn what, what it's all about. You have to go through it. In terms of your belief in a supreme being, what, what is the reason? Is there, is there some particular reason you would say, yes, I believe? Uh, for, for myself, what I was taught is that Wakantanka means the great mystery. Okay. Uh, for myself, I see it as spirit. It's an energy, a spirit energy. And the terms of, if, is that spirit a man or a woman? To me, 
it's not a man or a woman. Just a human body have genitals. The spirit doesn't. Because yeah, okay. that's, that's what makes our heart tick. There's a spirit in here that keeps us alive. This is the house. Okay. We're housing that spirit. So you see evidence of that spirit? That's, yes. That's, yeah. mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, actually, we've, always, we've already explored this one. I was going to ask, have you always been in your set of beliefs or have you been with other? And you were, you were because you were raised in the Catholic Church yeah. in residential mm -hmm. school, you were involved with them yes. one time. Frank, I know this is a difficult question. Would you be able to give us a, a, an idea of what you think God is or what you think Creator is like? He's, uh, I shouldn't say he, but th this, this great mystery. Yeah is uh, a positive energy. Okay. It's about love. You know, the seven sacred teachings, respect, honesty, you know, truth, wisdom, knowledge, all these things. So this it's about qualities. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Because with Christianity, I wasn't taught about love, about respect. It's all about negative things. Yeah, okay. So, it, you know, it was kind of confusing at first. Then I started asking questions, you know, you know, how come the priest can, you know, abuse? Yes. You know? Question a lot of people, I'm sure, are asking and, and right say, now. Yeah. And they say they work for God. If you work for God, you will be doing that. You yeah. have a lot of respect for that, whoever you're working with. So that's what I see. Do you think, do, does God have, or, and sorry, I'm calling God, but do you think Creator has absolute powers, can do anything? To a point, I think, to a point, because he created this world. Okay. And I don't think he'll abuse his powers in any way. It's all positive things. Okay. To my point of view. Why does Creator allow bad things to happen in the world? I think it's not up to the Creator, it's up to the people. He gave us life, then he put us on earth. Okay, here, live your life. So it's up to us how we use, we use, how, yes. how we use yep. that life. Okay. This kind of follows on from that, but uh, um, what I have to ask, so how, how does this, and this is a bit of a presumption here because this may be different from what you're saying. My question here was how does this fit with the idea that man is a reflection of God? I'm not, I'm not sure that that's what you're saying though, but in, in some religions they would say, well, man is a reflection of God. So then mm -hmm. my question is, since people, lowly people, have, feel they have a duty to protect others from harm wherever they can, mm -hmm. why doesn't God then feel the same need? But you're not necessarily saying that, that, that man is a reflection of God, are you? No. Okay. No. So that's an irrelevant question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, I apologize. Yeah. Okay. Um, you've told us a little bit about how people could, for example, get in contact with you if they were, if they were interested in, in finding out. Mm -hmm. how, how does... Um, you know your your spiritual life. How does it sort of how does it operate? I mean, yes, within the Christian churches, we know that people you know can, if they wish, go to services on a Sunday or whatever. Mm -hmm. So how how does you know somebody who's a member of your belief set uh, operate? I guess uh, to us Dakota people, it's not a religion. Okay, it's a way of life. I understand. This is how we lived. Even our ancestors lived in that way. Mm -hmm. So as the sun comes up, they prayed and. You prayed for, you know, a good life. Yes. When the sun went down, they gave thanks. You know, it's just, just a, it's a way of life. Okay. And these sweat lodges, these sun dances, those are our ceremonies. Yes. To sacrifice ourselves for our people. Okay. Especially our, our, our grandchildren. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, does your religion, and I'm sorry, you're, I know you've said it's not, we don't regard it as just a religion, it's a way mm -hmm. of life. Do you use any written materials, any texts? No, we don't. Are, are there certain oral things that, that are passed down from generation to exactly. that are about yep. the beliefs? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Um, now, we're not using written texts, but I know that, that oral stuff is very, very important. Mm -hmm. okay? So when things are passed down, do you believe that those things are meant to be interpreted literally, or can they be interpreted by different people in different ways, Frank? Yeah, everybody's different, and they have their ways of viewing a ceremony. Okay. Sweat Lodge is run by a Dakota person, mm -hmm. and maybe the Cree will run a different, or Ojibwe, or Dene, or whoever. It'll yes. run different. I guess our lives are based on visions, 
this is what we, we follow, our visions. Okay. okay, the Creator shows, you know, this is what you need to do tomorrow. So He gave us a vision. And this is why, you know, the Creator talks to our heart. I always tell people, follow your heart. It'll take you a long ways. Okay. Thank you. Do, and I, I, I guess, um, in terms of the beliefs, are there certain things that, that, that are associated with your, with your set of beliefs? In other words, do other people in, you know, that, that, that follow Dakota uh, spiritual ways, would they tend to believe the same kinds of things? Or is there yes. A, yes? Yes. Okay. And if you don't mind me asking, and, and this wasn't really included, but obviously you have a, a lot of dealings with folks who are Cree and who are Ojibwe and so forth. Is there a lot of difference between spiritual beliefs from the different nations? Maybe not difference, but similarities. Okay. Yeah, similarities. There's a lot of similarities. Yeah, yeah. because everything comes from the Dakota people, mm -hmm. like the pipe. Okay. It was given to the Lakota and Dakota, Dakota people. Okay. And then it fanned out. Okay. We shared. Same with the sweat lodge, the sun ants, it all. So it's all originated yeah. with the Dakota mm -hmm. people? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Has your, um, again, I'm using the term religion, which isn't, isn't right to know, but ha has it changed over time? So, or is it the same as your ancestors? Are, you know, no, it, it has changed. It has changed? Because now, with the protocols of walking this day of life, it doesn't adapt to the year 2000. Okay. So okay. it kind of needs to change. Because many people are urban, are living an urban lifestyle. Well, especially the, the youth, the teenagers. Yes. Okay. Because they're living in both worlds. So right now they're confused and frustrated. So we need to, I don't know, somehow incorporate the white system to the Aboriginal system, put them together so to make more, them understand. More understanding. Yeah, more understanding. Okay. How do members who have the same basic set of beliefs as yourself look at other religions, Frank? Uh, we don't judge. Okay. We accept all religion. It doesn't matter because there's a saying that uh, everybody prays to one God. Okay. It's just that there's many paths to the Creator. Do you think that depends on where people have grown up and you know? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Do you think that violence in the name of religion, in any religion, can ever be justified, Frank? Uh, I don't understand. Like. Okay, so, um, I mean, I'll give you, give you an example. Um, I mean, I'm from the United Kingdom, as you know. Mm -hmm. Been a lot of problems with violence in Northern Ireland over, actually over 100 Some of the, you know, a lot of that, superficially anyway, has to do with differences between Catholic and Protestant Oh, okay. Uh, religions. I mean, mm -hmm. that's one example. And of course, in the modern world, we've got people who are who are claiming to justify terrorist acts because of their religious beliefs mm -hmm. and so forth. Do you, do you think, just as a, a, a religious person, do you think violence in the name of religion can ever be justified? I think. Uh, well, it depends. Okay. How the person's minds work, I guess, because what the Dakota people. We think with the mind and the heart together. Okay. There's a channel here that we open up. And this is why we're so compassionate. And uh, like being a warrior, okay. you have to protect your family, your tribe, to the, to the death. Yes, okay. You see, as a warrior, killing a person will be our last option. There is communication. So we're, as average people, we like to communicate first. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, violence will be our last option. Yeah, okay, I understand. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm going to turn over my, my <laughs> page. <laughs> okay, do you feel that you have an obligation to convert other people to your religious beliefs? No, I don't. That's okay. up to that person. Okay. How do, how do um, Dakota people deal with people who choose to follow another path? For example, maybe... They're people that have followed Dakota spirituality, if you like, and then have chosen to um, change to another religion. How, how would you view? For myself, I have no problem with that because that's their lives. Okay. I can't tell them what to do. Okay. okay. Do, you, uh, do you believe in an afterlife? And if so, could you tell us <laughs> what you think that might be like? Yes, I do believe in that. Okay. And the work that I do 
sometimes people offer tobacco to go see a relative that's out of this province. Okay. So you have this uh, bo out of body experience. Okay. And I, I can do that willingly. Okay. And I was taught how to do that. I, I was just going to ask you that if you yeah. didn't mind. Yeah, the, 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 so that's something you were taught how yep. to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, so, so are, there, are there things that would be common for, for anybody when they die in an afterlife, do you think, or is it, is it going to be different for different people? I think uh, it'll be different for different people. Okay. Because you talk about, the elders talk about the happy hunting grounds. Yes, okay. You know, and there's heaven. So where do the, you know, these people go? Yeah. Aboriginal and non average Where did they go? Yeah, right. I'm, I'm sure they don't go to the same place. Right. Okay. You know? Yeah. So this is what the other elders say. There's a happy hunting ground where there's, you know, buffalo, whatever. Yeah. Okay. We strive on. So the things that, things that are relevant to your mm -hmm. yeah. traditional lifestyle. Yes. Okay. Um, You've talked a little bit about this in actual fact, but I'm just wondering if you could expand. I'm asking if you if there are rituals, and uh, and I, I know you've referred a little bit to uh, you know the sweat lodges mm -hmm. and, and uh, Sundance and so forth. Could you tell us a little bit about um, you know what what might happen at those sort of occasions? I guess uh, the sweat lodge is uh, is for purification. Okay. Uh, mainly, it's just like a sauna. You yes. go in there to sweat. That's how we detox ourselves. Okay. Because the foods that we eat today is full of chemicals. Yes. <laughs> so we need to sweat it out okay. and be healthy. And a lot of people ask me, Frank, how come you're not sick? Yet your brother is diabetic, your sister, you know, all they, they're diabetic and they have arthritis. How come you're not? So my question is, I go to the sweats. To release this this illness, yes, you know, and to pray and meditate. So this isn't just a spiritual experience; it's actually a physical experience yes. as well. Because a sweat lodge is like a hospital, it's like a pharmacy, it's like a counseling or a sharing circle, whatever. It's all into one. Okay. okay. And with the sun dance, again, that's for sacrifice. You sacrifice yourselves for your people, okay. because the things they're going through now. What sort of form do those sacrifices take, Frank? Uh, probably flesh offering. Okay. Or getting pierced. Okay. Yeah. How do you attract younger members? You were talking about youth earlier, and, uh, mm. and you know, difficulties that youth are going through these days isn't just Aboriginal people. Lots of young people are struggling to find their way, aren't they? But mm -hmm. how do you try, to, or do you try to attract? Um, younger members to come and talk to you, if you like. I guess I don't try. Okay. I just wait for them. Right. Because, like I said, we can't control other people's lives. Right. That's their choice. Mm -hmm. And I will go into schools and do my my, my teachings. Yes. Some okay. sacred teachings. So you make people aware that you're there, yeah. but, but yes. you can't drag them in. No, I yeah, no. can't. Yeah. But it's out there. Yeah. And, and again, I mean, if, if, if young people do come and become involved, is there anything you can do to try and keep them involved or...? I just keep encouraging them. Okay. That's all I can So it comes do. back to this positive thing, yeah. the whole positive mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are your um, occasions, if you like, open to anyone, Frank, or...? Yes, it is. Okay. It's open right. to anyone. Right. So it's cross-cultural. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time, Frank. Thank you. And that's extremely interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you for watching, and uh, we hope that you'll continue to watch any further episodes of What We Believe. And again, Frank and I are both with Brandon Friendship Centre, and we're happy to be here. Thank you very much.